What's up, guys? How are you? Guitar historian here with you today. And uh, before we get started, I just want to say one thing. If you haven't had a chance to listen to the 50th anniversary mixes of All Things Must Pass by George Harrison, then I would urge you to please come back here after that because I don't want to color your first impressions of the album. I want you to listen to it with completely fresh ears and um and let me know in the comments maybe i'm crazy maybe i'm out of my mind maybe you need to talk me down off the ledge cool you go do that and then then you come back here and we'll have a discussion i might be completely wrong but um there you go uh disclaimer done now we're gonna get into it (laughs) So I just was able to listen to some of the 50th anniversary mixes on Apple Music. I didn't buy any of the things. I I subscribed to Apple Music, so a lot of my stuff I just get on that. And I know that a lot of people will say, you got to get it on vinyl. you got to hear it now. Apple Music has very good um, (laughs) audio, so I'm, I'm very sure that I'm listening to, you know, what I'm listening to. And I can hear the difference between this mix and the older mixes. Um, and I can tell you with just absolute straight faced honesty that they suck. Okay. They are terrible. I am shocked to be honest with you at how bad they are. That's how bad I think they are. Um, I didn't get through all of it. I listened to selected, you know, my favorite tunes on there because I wanted to, you know, obviously hear those first and I need to listen to it cover to cover, but honestly it doesn't matter. Like if the the hits <laughs> off the album don't sound good, then I don't really understand what, you know, the filler songs are going to sound like. Okay, maybe that one song sounds great, but you know, okay. So let's start with a little history. Um, you know, obviously All Things Must Pass was originally produced by Phil Spector. Um, This 50th anniversary album, if it says produced by Phil Spector on it, they should, he should, he would want that taken off. I guarantee you he would, he would want that taken off because it's so bad compared to the original versions and whatever flaws the original versions had, that's how it came out. And that's how he listened to it for decades before George had a chance to remaster them in 2000, and even those remasters in 2000 are way better, miles ahead of what we're listening to here, okay? Now, what are the knocks of the original version? Well, George always had a problem with Phil Spector using too much reverb and it kind of sounding a little too busy, right? Okay, fair enough, right? But you could still hear all the instruments. So when you listen to those original mixes, you can hear even even instruments that are not like out in the front. If you're listening on headphones, you can hear the pianos. You can hear the multiple guitars. You can hear the drummers. And you can hear everything going on and all the backing vocals, right? You can pick them out. On these mixes... I'll give you a good example. The song Wawa, right? At the beginning, it opens with the guitar, and it does sound like there's at least three or four guitars going at the same time. Now it kind of sounds like one guitar. And then it goes into the drums, and we start the song, and at the beginning, there's a piano. This is the original version. There's a piano. There's like a tinkling piano. Like that kind of thing, right? I cannot hear the piano on the new version. It's gone. I literally cannot hear the piano. It's it's just, it doesn't exist anymore, right? And then the vocals come in, and they're very, like, disconnected from the rest of what's going on. Instead of them, you know, being in... You know, Phil Spector had a way of, of making it sound as if all those musicians, even they, some of them might have been overdubs, were all in the same, it was like an, or, like he was, he was commanding an orchestra, you know? Like when you listen to an orchestra play, and 
there's 50 musicians on the stage, right? But you could still hear each and every string. You could hear every note. That's what he used to do. That's what he did, right? He made it sound like you can hear everybody, even though, yes, it was a lot of noise and it was very full and it was very lush, but it sound, you can pick it out. And on this one, it's like, I don't know what the hell they were doing on it. I really have no clue. None. Um, just using Wawa as my reference, because Wawa is probably one of the bigger Wall of Sound songs. And it was a song that I know George had aversions to, um, not the writing and the melody of the song. Obviously, that's a great stuff, but like just the way it was recorded. And it's like... You can't just take players out or like or just turn them all the way down until you can literally not hear them anymore. The mix is very it's it's kind of like more bassy, but without it being like live bassy, you know, instead of like the bass being kind of like a, a very kind of good feel to it. Like I can understand bumping up the bass a little bit, but it's gotta have a live feel to it. This one just didn't have it's very like lifeless everything's just lifeless you know the the vocals are disconnected from everything else like he's he's in a booth recording them and he's like a hair off of with the rest of the music it's just it's hard to explain i just didn't i don't like them and i'm not saying this from the standpoint of being this you know oh i only like the original original versions the 2017 remaster of sergeant pepper is amazing if you go and listen to that, it sounds great. But what did they do? Right? Giles Martin went in and he basically made all the instruments sound better. And then he produced it the same way that his father did. Right? He didn't try to change it. He didn't try to change a lot of like the levels. He just made everything sound better and more updated and crystal clear. And then turned it back into Sgt. Pepper. Right? That's what we needed to do with this is like make all the instruments sound better and then turn it back into the wall of sound, but just with modern ears. You know what I mean? That's not what happened here. I, I honestly don't know what they were going for. I have no idea. Um, but it doesn't sound good. And I have no desire whatsoever to buy any of the box sets or spend hundreds of dollars, you know, buying any of these things unless I'm, you know, going to do it from a collector standpoint, but in, in my estimation, I feel like I have more of a, a need to collect the older versions so that I don't lose those. Because those, the 2000 version and the original vinyl are going to be lost because eventually this version is going to supplant all of those as the definitive version. And it's awful. So I'm kind of shocked and I'm, and I'm upset and I'm, you know, I'm just sad because, you know, this was a big day for George. It's, you know, he's back in the, back in the uh, news and, you know, his album is being re-released and it's the 50th anniversary version. It's supposed to be a big day for George and I just was not feeling the mixes at all. Um, obviously I want you guys to let me know how you feel. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe you got to talk me off the ledge. If so, uh, more power to you. I, I'm, I did not enjoy them and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys think about it, but, um, I didn't think it was pretty. So that's all I have to say about that.